What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. So today on the channel, we are troubleshooting some uh, overhead radiant tube heaters. We've got one down on the bench, so we're going to go over basic principles of operation and just how you can troubleshoot it yourself, figure out maybe you can fix one on your own. So uh, I hope to see you guys click subscribe and I'd love to see you around the channel. And as always, let's get down to the video. All right guys, so we're down here on the bench in the shop. Uh, I'm gonna show you the basic principles of operation when it comes to, uh, this is basically a small furnace. So if you think of it like just like a traditional furnace, um, you need two things, well, three things in order to uh, get any furnace to run. You need airflow, you need ignition, and you need fuel. So whether it's LP or it's natural gas, um, you are going to need an ignition source. Um, I'll show you the igniter here in a minute. And you're also going to need airflow. So I'm about to show you how most of the Co-Ray vac heaters or uh, radiant tube heaters, uh, like this one, this is an older model, but uh, they all operate with the same principles. Um, so that if you're here for a little maintenance and trying to figure out why your system doesn't start, it may be something simple. So let's get down to it. Let's go through our principles of operation. So um, usually these are thermostatically controlled, so you're going to have a, ther a thermostat um, down at ground level, uh, and th that is basically going to make your connection to make contact to say, hey, let's go ahead and turn on. So this is an older unit. It literally just has 110, um, and then I, I had it controlled by a contactor before, so basically my thermostat controlled a contactor, and then it uh, gave me the 120. So uh, what we're going to do today is we're just going to plug it in, uh, literally. I have wired in a extension cord here to show us on the ground um, and we are not hooked up to any fuel source so we can show you the basic principles here going forward so first things first you want to make sure that you have airflow so uh, as soon as you turn the unit on you are going to get the fan to come on if a fan is sounding binding or has any crazy squeal to it or uh, excess vibration it may be your fan having an issue with the impeller. It may have come loose from its mount. Uh, this happens sometimes in some cheap screws that are self-tapping into sheet metal. They come loose. They break that seal. They are no longer holding that pressure that you need in order to make the air the air switch click or engage. So. The first things first is uh, we're going to check the f the uh, the. We're going to check the, uh, the air, make sure it's flowing. So I'm going to turn this heater around, and I'm going to show you exactly uh, what needs to happen on the other side of this. Uh, we're going to talk about airflow first. All right, so what we're looking at here is our fan motor over here. Our fan pulls air from this side. As you can see, as you can see the fan pulls from this side. And then it basically is pushing air from, from through here, coming through your heater. It's gonna go through these small little holes in this, um, in this uh, bulkhead here. So you see the bulkhead with the small holes. Um, this cover seals up really tight so that you don't have, uh, th that there's pressure in here. So as it flows through here, it's going to give you, basically what it does is give you an even, uh, even flow over your ignition source. So once you have the good flow down the tube and coming out the burner, as you can see the burner is here, starts here, you have a tube coming in. All right, just like that, you have your tube coming in or your uh, fuel source coming in here and then goes through here, through your burner, and then comes out the face of your heater here. All right, so in order to have good airflow, you need to have, this has to be sealed. This has to make a, uh, this has to make pressure. So that pressure has to be a certain point to make the air switch. So just keep that in mind. There's also a cover switch here so that it will not run with the burner assembly open. So we're gonna go ahead and close this up. Just wanted to show you the basic theory of operation is this side of the heater has to be pressurized in order for it to make the switch to say, hey, I'm ready to give fuel and I'm ready to give ignition. 
Also, while we're over here, I'm gonna show you exactly what this thing does if you take this cover off. So you can troubleshoot this switch to see if it's the switch or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug my unit in here. We'll go ahead and plug it in. Boom! All right, I'll plug it in. The unit does absolutely nothing right now. When you hit this button, All right, it turned my fan on. So just showing you here, if you're getting absolutely nothing out of this, it might be it might be a switch like this. Could be a control board. Um, it could be something to do with your power, your thermostat, whatever. But there is this switch here. So be weary of this. It's uh, gonna not allow this to turn on while you have this cover off. Okay, what I wanna show you on this side here is here's your gas valve, here's your air switch to make sure that uh, there's air pressure coming out of your box. You see this, this port right here? This is where the air pressure uh, basically is saying, hey, it's pushing this switch in. There's a diaphragm in here that clicks over and then it basically puts these two wires together. Now, if you want to test this and see if this is your issue, you literally take these two leads off of this air switch and you're gonna connect them together. If you connect these two wires together here, you are going to basically bypass this air switch and if it starts running, well, you know your problem is something to do with air. Whether you don't have a good seal on the other side or this switch is bad, you can connect these two wires together and troubleshoot that. Now, as you can see back here, we have the two wires running to my door switch back here. So you can eliminate that by uh, touching those two together as well. Um, you can also check this transformer for 28 volts DC. It will not run without 28 volts DC here. This is why you have a transformer here. So um, the, the power wires are over here. Make sure you're getting your 120 volt here on black and white and then you can make sure that you're getting 28 volts DC on the other side of the transformer. If you have power and all else fails, you have a controller here that tells you, or that basically going through all the theory of operations here um, to say this thing's ready to turn on. So, all right, we're gonna go through an ignition sequence. Basically what's happened, it, what happens is the fan motor here turns on, it creates that pressure inside the machine, it clicks a switch over, says, hey, we are ready. We have air pressure. Then the module will turn on the igniter. I will show you the igniter and what it, what it looks like when it's lit up. And then once the igniter is lit for a certain amount of time, it then tells the gas valve, hey, we're ready to give it gas. And then the gas flows through the valve and boom, we have ignition. So it's really a simple process. I know I just spewed a ton of stuff at you, but let's get down to showing you exactly how this thing works as if it were hanging in the air and had a tube connected to it. All right, our air has come on, or our, our fan has come on. You'll hear this click. All right, now this has made the switch here. We have got pressure. So now we will begin to see the, the igniting unit fire up. Okay, now our igniter gets red hot. Now it's an easy thing to figure out if the igniter's bad, is if it doesn't glow red like that, then it's no good. Once the igniter is hot, the control module is going to tell the gas valve to click on. And you'll hear that shortly. Gas valve turns on and forces the LP or natural gas through and voila, boom, we have fire out of here. Now it just realized that there's no, there's no fire, so now it restarts the sequence. We're going to go back, it shut the gas valve off it knows that we don't have anything hooked up. So that's your basic theory of operation. Your fan makes a pressure, pressure clicks the switch, switch tells the module, hey, we're ready to ignite. The igniter switch is on. And then once the igniter's hot, your gas valve switches the fuel on and boom, you're lit. So basic theory of operation. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, a quick troubleshooting video on how to troubleshoot uh, your uh, radiant tube heater. I hope that somebody got some value out of it. I did not get out the meter and test everything. You can test uh, at your various points 
28 volts DC at your transformer. Make sure your transformer is getting power, otherwise you're not going to get your volts DC. You also want to look at your igniter. If your igniter, uh, so I've seen those those specific igniters, they just break. So uh, they're very brittle. They heat up and cool down very many uh, many many times. So it can easily break and just sever the connection there. All that is is a resistance loop, just like a light bulb gets really hot and then boom you're you're flowing fuel across it so in videos in the future i will probably put a manometer on a gas valve and show you exactly how to uh, adjust the pressure stuff like that uh, in the future we'll go over stuff like that but this is a very very uh, beginner video uh, you can troubleshoot hey if if all of these things test good it's probably your module your module does a lot of things it tells things to do things in a certain order so just depending on what kind of unit you have it might be a little different but it all has the same principle of operation make sure you have airflow over your flame make sure that there's something to ignite your fuel when it's put there and um that's basically it so i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you got some good info out of it uh let me know in the comments uh if you learned something new today let me know give me a thumbs up or thumbs down whatever you're into and we'll see you guys in the next video